Today we're going to be looking at five infants who disappeared. No unsolved mystery is more heartbreaking than the disappearance of an infant. It is an incredibly painful experience for a parent to bring a child into the world and only enjoy a limited amount of time with them before they go missing and are never heard from again. But in this type of case at least there's always a decent possibility that the victim is still alive. Whenever an infant is abducted, it's often done by someone who wants to raise the child as their own, or sell the baby for the purpose of a legal adoption. The child can grow up and live a seemingly normal life without knowing that they are stolen from their real family. Number 1 Christopher Abeda. In the early morning hours of July 15, 1986, Colorado Springs residents Gil and Bernice Abeda discovered that their seven-month-old son Christopher was missing from his crib. The couple last saw Christopher after putting him to bed at midnight and the front door had been left unlocked. Some suspicion initially fell upon the parents. Gil and Bernice were in the midst of reconciling after a separation, and this particular night just happened to be the first time in a while that Gil was staying over at their home. However, the Abedas have never officially been named as suspects in their son's disappearance, and the investigation efforts of the Colorado Springs Police faced heavy criticism since they eventually destroyed most of the evidence in the case. Christopher's parents believed he was abducted, and claimed to have received numerous hang-up phone calls for six months prior to his disappearance, which immediately came to a halt before resuming months later. These calls were eventually traced to a woman named Emma Bradshaw, whom Gill had been having an affair with. Because she had a prior history of break-ins, Bradshaw is considered the prime suspect, though she has always maintained her innocence. Nearly 27 years later, the Abeda family maintains a website about Christopher's disappearance and are currently offering a $100,000 reward for information that will finally provide them with closure. Number 2. David Blockett David Blockett was only two weeks old on December the 11th, 1980, when an African-American woman calling herself Mary Kelly visited his family's home in Newport News, Virginia. Kelly told David's mother, Vanessa, that she was from the Department of Social Services and that they were sponsoring a function for children at a nearby medical center. She managed to convince Vanessa to let her take David and his two-year-old brother, Frederick, to the function. Later that afternoon, Frederick was found wandering around alone at a shopping center. He had a note in his pocket with his name and his address on it. Frederick was returned to his mother, but there was no sign of David. A check with the Department of Social Services revealed that no one named Mary Kelly worked for them, nor did they have any employees matching her description. Once he got older, Frederick had a vague recollection of the abduction and seemed to remember the woman meeting up with a male accomplice. In a bizarre postscript to the story, two of David's nephews also wound up being abducted over 30 years later, though they were soon found unharmed. Sadly, the same thing has yet to be said for David himself, and he remains missing. Number 3. Camilla Mobley On the morning of July 10th, 1998, Shanera Mobley gave birth to a little girl named Camilla at University Medical Center in Jacksonville, Florida. Throughout the day, she had frequent encounters with an unidentified African-American nurse. About eight hours after Camilla was born, this nurse said she there was a problem with the baby's temperature and took her out of the room. They apparently left the hospital together because this is the last anyone ever saw of Camellia or the nurse. Even though the woman had worn a nurse's uniform and had an identification badge, the hospital had no record of her working there. 
It's speculated that she may have had previous hospital experience since she seemed to have knowledge of the medical terminology and the building's layout. When she was not posing as a nurse, the woman was passing herself off as a member of the Mobley family to the hospital staff and she frequently asked them when the baby would be leaving the nursery. Shanera eventually sued the hospital over her daughter's abduction and received a $1.5 million settlement. It's believed that the unidentified woman was scouting for a child she could abduct and raise as her own. If Camelia Mobley is still alive today, she is 15 years old and probably completely unaware of her true identity. Number 4 Lisa Irwin Jeremy Irwin returned to his Kansas City, Missouri home at 4 a.m. on the morning of October 4, 2011 and noticed that his 10-month-old daughter Lisa was missing from her crib. Lisa's mother, Deborah Bradley, claimed that she had last seen her after putting her to bed the night before. Jeremy was also surprised to discover that several of his house lights were on and the front door was unlocked. Lisa's bedroom window was open and three cell phones were missing. Deborah had also gotten drunk that night and soon faced suspicion that she was responsible for Lisa's disappearance. Police accused Deborah of failing a lie detector test and had a cadaver dog search the Irwin home. They claimed that the dog turned up a scent of a dead body near Deborah's bed, but they never took any material from the home for further testing or presented any evidence to support their claim. Lisa's family believed she was abducted, and this theory had been supported by three witnesses who claimed they saw an unidentified man walking down a road five kilometers away from the Irwin home that night, carrying a baby wearing nothing but a diaper. One month after Lisa's disappearance, Jeremy claimed his debit card was stolen, and in May 2012, it was reportedly used on a website that provides false birth certificates. Authorities have investigated these leads, but have yet to find out what happened to Lisa Irwin. Number 1. Mary Agnes Moroni In 1930, Michael and Catherine Moroni lived in Chicago with their daughters Anastasia and Mary Agnes, who had just turned two years old. Michael posted an ad for a social services person to help take care of his family, and on May 14th, a woman calling herself Julia Otis showed up at their home, claiming she'd been sent by a social worker named Mrs. Henderson. The next day, she offered to take Mary Agnes shopping for clothes, and her parents consented. One day later, the Moronis would receive a letter from Otis, claiming she had taken Mary Agnes to California and would return the child in two months. Two weeks later, the Moronis received another letter, this time from a woman named Alice Henderson. She claimed that Julia Otis was her cousin and had kidnapped Mary Agnes because her own husband and baby had died the year before. The Ramones never heard from Otis or Henderson again, but authorities believe both notes had the same handwriting. In 1952, a California woman named Mary McClelland came forward and claimed she was Mary Agnes Moroni. She reunited with her family, but there were suspicions that McClelland was not actually Mary Agnes, since she did not have the child's hernia scar, and a doctor claimed to have delivered McClelland the year before Mary Agnes was born. Decades later, after McClellan died, DNA testing confirmed that she was not actually Mary Agnes Moroni. Thank you very much for listening. That was five infants who have disappeared, never to be found again. Please stay tuned for the next video where we'll look at another five infants who have disappeared. But, I've been just plain creepy... Or as most people know me on the Twitterverse, JPC. And once again, I'd like to thank you for checking out this video. Please like, share, and subscribe. It's all free. And I shall catch you in the next video. 
Have a great weekend.